Um, we were very uh, pleased uh, to win a football game that uh, was a very, very challenging football game for us. Uh, Chattanooga has, I think, overall been been the team on our schedule that we've played the most, uh, longest. Even though it's been inconsistent, we didn't play them last year, but I think this makes the sixth year that we played them in the sort of renewal and one that we hope we can renew for a long time. But uh, having said that, that is the best Chattanooga team that we've played against. And um, and I think they came fully prepared mentally and emotionally to, to win. So uh, the satisfaction is that you know, it was a big win against a quality, in my opinion, a quality opponent. Um, I thought there were some things about the day that were uh, uh, first, first of a kind, uh, uh, and it was the biggest crowd. That's one thing. Come on here, Jones. Uh, it was the biggest crowd we've ever had there. But I think it's more than just uh, when you talk about that. I, I, I think that. Regardless of the size of the crowd, I thought there was a, a real passion and chemistry from our student body at that game. And that, that's what stuck out to me. Uh, I mean, I've never seen anything close to the numbers and the kind of support that was there in those students. And I know there's been an effort made to get, to get those students there, and, uh, and you know, they're part of the win as far as I'm concerned. I thought Marquez, um, as he has um, um, in the first game, he directed a, a very consistent fourth quarter comeback, multiple drives over a long stretch of field with some critical plays. He did a great job managing, which really didn't start off the day doing very or doing what he's capable of doing that way. And I, don't, I don't know the answers to why not. Really, at this point, uh, it's about getting ready to go uh, go forward and play Georgia State. Now, talk about series of series with a history. We are beginning something historic. I mean, there is little doubt that you look at forward and as far as you want to look forward, that this will become a very consistent and very intense rivalry. It will. Uh, the one thing I know about. Georgia State, where well, they got 30,000 students, they've got resources. I mean, they've, they've got a head coach. It's, they've got a defensive coordinator, an offensive coordinator. You know, they, they went after, they knew what they wanted. And you know, both, of, both the coordinators are BCS bold, have multiple games as, as years, rather, as BCS bold teams. I think maybe have won ACC championships. You know, John Thompson was a Spurrier at Florida as a coordinator. Uh, uh, Bond, John Bonds was that uh, coordinator for Chan Gailey at Georgia Tech when, when they were in bowl games. Both of them are from Arkansas. I know both of them from Arkansas. Uh, I know Bill Curry. Uh, Bill, when, when he took that job, one of the first things he did was come over here and just sit down and talk and walk and look around and see you know, what the differences were. And I can remember having conversations with him. And as he left, thinking, well, one day it won't be this, this kind of, just two, two ball coaches talking that day. Well, it's competitive today. And, and I think they are competitive. You know, what's in a name right now, the name Georgia State football doesn't, doesn't. Expectation, even, uh, and if it does bring one, it may bring the wrong one because uh, they've got they've got a center, a left guard, and a left tackle that the way they were recruited, we couldn't assign. Uh, the left guard and left tackle were in line to start at Georgia Tech, went to Georgia State because the style of play changed when uh, Paul Johnson.
plus one in there. And, um, and I could go on and on. There, there are not a bunch of young puppies. Uh, they've got a three or four on either side of the ball that are true young development players. The rest of those guys have experience. I don't think we have necessarily a big experience advantage on them. We have some experience advantage on them. So we don't have experience advantage on the coaching staff. And we have very little experience advantage on their, on their starters on offense and defense. So, uh, but we're, you know, we're challenged ourselves to, to uh, play four quarters of football, which uh, we had we had played our, you know, four quarters that we're proud of yet, and uh, this this would be a good time to do it. So, uh, don't really know what to expect. I think we're playing in a great arena. They, they had 30,000 people in there. Uh, you know, it's on television. It's, you know, it's an opportunity to make a statement. Um, and, you know, I hope we're, by the time it gets here that we have the excitement that's equal to the opportunity. And I do expect us to. So, uh, you know, uh, Quez has created a we scored every time we've gotten the ball in the fourth quarter. I think that's probably an unequal uh, feat quest by anybody. But uh, but we need to have we need to have four quarters. John Houston, seven balls, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> is that the most you've caught in a college game? got more bruises than you ever walked out of the college game. Because <laughs> they were all physical, man. You didn't have no easy ones. Uh, Fonzo is a, Alfonso, I call him. Fonzo. But, uh, was a high school quarterback and, and an athlete and a linebacker. But he, there, there's a personality that goes along with positions. And when you're the fullback in a team that prides itself on running the ball, you are the point of contact, the point of, you're apt to where the action is happening every down. And he's, he's become, he had, he had the best yards for carry as a runner the other day. We probably don't give him ball enough. That's just part of that role. But if you'll notice about people who have fullbacks and that emphasize that two-back game, they're critical. Uh, and so you know, NFL teams, once they get one, they never let them go. I mean, they'll, they'll, Max Strong played 15 years, and they were still trying to get him to stay. And, you know, their, his, his role is under understated, but for Marquez getting in a play, he's basically trying to find a place a lot of times just to fit the fullback as a as a lead blocker, but the running game is something that we've got to we've got to get more consistent with. And Alfonso is a big part of that, even though he's a runner also. So you got the running game, you got the passing game, you got the game manager here, uh, and we you know we expect to play four quarters of offensive football. Defense should be getting some help back with Tim McGee and Demetrio. We ought to be maybe full force for the first time if we can make it through practice. We, we could be at full force for the first time defensively all year. I probably answered every question you had. Right there.